The Twins Paradox, where you have the twin brother staying at home, the twin sister travels for a long time with very high speeds and comes back. Now since moving clocks take slower compared to the stationary ones, the brother says, hey sis, your clock slowed down, less time passed for you, so you must be younger. But from her perspective, she was always at rest because motion is relative. It was the brother who was moving, his clock was ticking slower, and therefore he is younger. But both can't be younger than each other. Paradox. Now you probably already know there's so much divided opinion on this. Some say when the sister turned around, there was the acceleration, and it is the acceleration that's the key. While others say it has nothing to do with the acceleration. And some others say, well, you have to use general relativity. <laughs> Einstein, what's really going on? Come on. Einstein says, Mohesh, you are missing a fundamental piece over here. And instead of focusing on that, you're getting distracted by this whole turnaround thing. Remember time dilation and length contraction? Well, turns out that there's a third effect which does not share the same limelight as these two. It is much more subtle, and yet it is at the heart of resolving almost all the paradoxes. Focus on that and we'll be done. And to convince us actually, Einstein says that there is a paradox even before the turnaround. And if we can actually resolve that, we will get all the intuition we will need and every single thing will make perfect sense. So. If you're ready to finally put a rest to this entire twins paradox, let's begin. Einstein says, all we gotta do is consider a third twin brother and just give everybody a clock. But I'm like, first of all, twins paradox itself is complicated. Why you wanna complicate it more with triplets over here? Einstein says, no, 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 don't worry. It's actually gonna make much more sense if you consider that person. But second of all, like how do you know that this person is of the same age as this guy over here? Like he's so far away. Einstein says, ah, Good question. For that, what we're gonna do is keep a radio transmitter exactly in between the two planets and wait for the right time because there's a, there's a, the sister is coming. Wait for it, she's coming, she's coming. Okay, here we go. All right, we're gonna send a radio signal and when the radio signal hits the clocks, they start. And what did you just see? The radio signals hit the clocks at exactly the same time and therefore all the clocks are in sync. They start at exactly the same time. Since I can sync up all the clocks, it's equal into saying that they have exactly the same age, okay? So now we are ready to see what's gonna happen. First, let's consider the journey from the brother's perspective. In the brother's perspective, they are at rest, their clocks are ticking normally. Let's say it takes 10 years in their clocks for her to reach there. Now the question is, how much time would have elapsed in her clock? Well, I say because she was the one who was moving, her clock must have ticked slower and therefore less time must have passed for her. So it should be less than 10. That's, that's perfect. Um, there, let's just, just for the sake of simple numbers, let's say only five years has passed for her. We are considering the time dilation factor to be two, this means, okay? So look, when she reaches over there, less time has passed for her, so she has now become younger than this twin brother. But Einstein now asks, what does the whole thing look like from her perspective? Well, I say from her perspective, she's at rest and it's the planet that is moving towards her. And therefore it's the exact opposite. 10 years would pass for her, five years should be passed on these planets. And Eisen says, close enough, but you're forgetting something, Mahesh, length contraction. Remember, from the moving perspective, all the lengths appear to be shrunk, shrunk by exactly the same amount that is the time dilation factor. So since the time dilation factor over here is two, she will see the distance between the planets and the planets, everything shrunk by a factor of two. Therefore, she doesn't have to wait for the whole planet to travel this entire distance. From her perspective, the planet has to travel only the half the distance to reach the planet. And so she won't wait for 10 years, she'll only wait for five years. So just over here you can see that in both the frames, we agree on the sister's clock. In both the frames we say, five years has passed for her. Okay, you also see because of length contraction, you're beginning to see that the situation is not exactly symmetric. Okay, the situation, what you see from the uh, from the brother's perspective is not the same as from sister's perspective. Length contraction comes into picture. But anyways, now comes the big question. Einstein asks, Mahesh, what do you think will be the clocks reading in their, in, in the brother's uh, clocks? And I say, well, now in this case, because it's the brothers that were moving, their clocks must be dilated by a factor of two. So their clock should now show five divided by two, two and a half years must have passed over there. And Einstein says, look, right in front of your eyes, there's a paradox over here. Here, this brother is older, she's younger, but over here, this brother is younger. 
paradox. And what's beautiful about this is that there is no turnaround, no acceleration, and still we're getting a paradox. How? Clearly we made some mistake, but where? We've considered the link contraction and time dilation. It's a third effect, isn't it, Einstein? What is that third effect? And how does this resolve the paradox? And Einstein says, yes, Mahesh. If we can figure out exactly over here how to resolve it, we are done, because the same thing applies to turn around as well. Okay, are you ready for it? Yes. So Einstein says, remember how we synced up the clocks? Yeah. Well, this is what it looked like from the brother's perspective, right? The question is, what did this synchronization look like from the sister's perspective? From the sister's perspective, the planets are approaching her. Do you think that the two radio pulses are going to hit these two clocks at exactly the same time? No. From her perspective, since this planet is approaching the photon or the radio pulse, it's gonna get hit fast. And this is uh, moving away from it, this is gonna hit, get hit later. So from her perspective, Look, this clock starts first, then this clock starts. So from her perspective, the clocks did not start at the same time. By the time their clock starts, this clock has already ticked some amount and I've blurred it to keep some mystery over here. That was the mistake, but what does this mean, Einstein? Well, Einstein says this means events that are simultaneous in one frame need not be simultaneous in moving frame. This is the third effect. This is called the relativity of simultaneity. This is so mind bending. It means that the brother says, hey, our clocks synced up at exactly the same time. They started at the same time. But the sister says, uh-uh, the clocks did not start at the same time. But do you know the implications of this? Do you understand how freaky this is? Because we said the clocks pretty much represent their age. Therefore, the brother says, right now, that guy is of the same age as I am. He's my twin. But from the sister's perspective, she says, uh-uh, right now, that guy is older than you are, bro. She says that this guy is older. Relativity of simultaneity means People don't even agree on the ages of each other. That is so freaky. And that is the key to resolving at least the first half, and if, in fact, the whole twins paradox. Whoa. But now comes the big question, okay? If we want to resolve it, we need to know exactly how much has this clock ticked uh, compared to this, or when, when these clocks uh, synced up. Well, if you do the math, you will find that this clock has ticked exactly this much amount more by the time this, got, this clock started. V represents the relative velocity. X represents the proper distance between the two events. Over here, that represents the distance between these two clocks, not the contracted length, the proper length, the length seen from the rest frame. And C is, of course, the speed of light. Now, here's a tip, folks. Whenever I come across new equations, I always like to see if I if it makes sense to me. Can I can I get some feeling for it? Like what is it trying to tell me? Okay. Over here, I like to ask under what circumstances this number will be zero. Because if this number is zero, that means these two clocks are in sync. That means people will agree that these events are simultaneous. Okay? So when will that happen? When will everybody agree that things are simultaneous? That's the question. Just by looking at this equation. First first is if v equal to zero, then this whole thing becomes zero. Does that make sense? Yeah, if relative velocity is zero, that person is at rest with respect to you, then both of you will agree that the events are simultaneous. That makes sense. The second place when this will be zero is when x equal to zero. What does that mean? Well, if x equals zero, that means the two events are happening at exactly the same location. This means if you have two simultaneous events happening at the same location, then everybody will agree, regardless of their velocity, everyone will agree that they are simultaneous. For example, we considered the two photons that came out from here, um, they are simultaneous, but they are also happening at the same location, right? And we saw even in this frame, the same thing happened. The two photons came out at exactly the same time. And that's great because this is one thing that we can be absolutely sure about when we change reference frames. If you have two events that are simultaneous in one place, we know for sure those have to be simultaneous in every other frame as well, okay? Anyways, 
Coming back to the paradox, now the big question is, how much will this number be if we plug in? Because we can find the velocity, we know the time dilation factor is two, so from that we can find the velocity. We can find the distance because we know it took 10 years, so we can do all of that. If you plug in the numbers, and you can do it yourself if you want, we'll get this number to be exactly seven and a half years. Again, because this is so mind bending, what does it mean? This means the brother says, hey, that bro right there that in the distant planet, he's the same age as I am. He's my long lost twin. But the sister says, uh-uh, that bro right there, he's seven and a half years older to you, bro. <laughs> That's what this means. And that number seven and a half makes me really happy because I think we can now resolve the paradox and see what's going on. Okay, so one more time, when we look at from the brother's perspective, it takes 10 years in their clocks and five years in the sister's clock, so less time has passed for the sister, the traveling twin, okay? What does it look like from the, the sister's perspective? Same as before, five years in her clock, and two and a half years would have passed for them, but look, when two and a half more years passes for this person, that person's age will now become 10, just like over here. And so, paradox is resolved, even though, that there is less time passed in this brother's frame for this brother she still agrees that this guy is older why because he was never her twin to begin with he was never her same age at the same age to begin with if you think about it now what she says is look earlier earlier he was seven and a half years older but now because less time has passed for him, that age gap has decreased, has reduced exactly by two and a half, and now the new age gap has become only five years. Look, in both cases they agreed, it's the traveling people, their time takes slower, and yet you can see there is no paradox. Why? So it came from the fact that two people who are twins in the rest frame, in one frame, they were not twins in the moving frame. That was the key. So the key was relativity of simultaneity. And this is why we say the twins paradox has nothing to do with the acceleration. Or does it? See, a counter argument we can make is that in this particular thought experiment, she was always moving. And therefore we could say that, hey, she, th they were never twin brothers to begin with. But what if she was at rest? to begin with, then she got into a ship and accelerated. What would happen then? Well, Einstein says, let's find out. Well, if she's at rest to begin with, then of course she would agree that all of them are twins. And now we know that if she jumps into a ship and accelerates, during that acceleration, this twin must be jumping time. So think about what's going on. When she's at rest, she says, now that person is the twin brother. But when she accelerates and reaches that new velocity, she says, now <laughs> that person is no longer my twin brother or your twin brother for that matter. And so isn't it the acceleration that's causing this time jump of the twin brother? So isn't the acceleration the key? That's the argument that, that's the other side of the argument. Well, Einstein says, well, if you think about it, yes, Acceleration is truly, I mean, without acceleration, she wouldn't be able to go from rest to motion. So in that sense, she needed acceleration to jump into that motion. But what caused the time jump? It's not the effects of acceleration per se. What caused the time jump is the fact that when she went into the moving frame, her definition of now changed. It's the relativity of simultaneity that caused this time jump from her perspective. That's why people say that it's not the acceleration per se that is the resolution to this. Does that make sense? And I'm like, kind of. I had to think this a couple of times and I had to mull over this, so don't feel, don't feel discouraged that if, if you don't get it right away. But I have another question, Einstein. Why did we say that it was her who accelerated? Can't we say that it, she's at always at rest from her frame and it was the brothers who accelerated backwards, right? Well, Einstein says no, because acceleration is absolute. You can feel the forces of the acceleration, so you would know who is accelerating. But even without that, you can visually see accelerations. How? Well, imagine, imagine when she's at rest, let's imagine that she actually thought that it's the planets that accelerated backwards. 
what would the world look like if the planets accelerated backwards? Well, then she would see the planets and everything then contracting. Why would she see the distance between the planets changing? Think about it. If two objects are accelerating at exactly the same time, why would the distance between them change? The distance between them would be exactly the same, right? <laughs> By the way, this is the resolution to something called the Bell's Spaceship Paradox, okay? If, if you, you can check it out later on. But the fact that this doesn't happen, the fact is that when she accelerates, she will see link contraction. And when I say see, I mean there will be other aberrations. She will see Doppler effect and all of that. But she will eventually see that the distance between the planets has changed. So she won't see that. She will see this. And when she sees this, she will know that yes, it is me who has accelerated. It is my frame that has changed. I have changed from one inertial frame to another. And therefore my definition of simultaneity has changed. And so I went from now, that guy being my bro twin brother, to now that guy is seven and a half years older to me. So once again, long story short, when she accelerates, she's the one who's changing frame, her definition of now changes, and look in the direction of the acceleration to the right side in this case, that, that person jumps time by seven and a half years. And now we have everything we need to resolve the whole paradox. And this would be a great moment to actually pause the video and see what exactly happens when she does, goes there, turns around and comes back. Pause and try it yourself if you want. All right, are you ready for this? Let's do this. Okay, she jumps into the ship, accelerates, and it takes 10 years in their clock for her to reach there, but only five years in her clock because of time dilation. Then she turns around, Nothing happens during that time. She does accelerate, but nothing happens to anyone's clock because that acceleration is happening much quicker. And then when she comes back, it takes another 10 years or 20 years would have passed and only 10 years would have passed in her clock, another five years. And so when she comes back, look, she is 10 years younger. Now, ready to look at the same situation from her perspective? Let's go. So right now she's at rest. She agrees that that far away twin is her twin, in fact but now she gets into a plane, accelerates, and that far away twin jumps time and becomes seven and a half years older. Now, she will see the planet coming towards her. It takes her five years, from her perspective, that planet takes five years to reach her, but because of time dilation, it takes them only two and a half years. 7.5 plus two and a half becomes 10, and now this guy, her original brother, is at two and a half years now. Now she has to turn around. First, we will decelerate this. Think about what happens when she decelerates. When she decelerates, she gets an acceleration to the left, the same amount that she had initially. During this time, it's this clock that will jump by seven and a half years. So when she decelerates and comes to rest, look, this clock jumps by seven and a half years and that clock will now go to 10 years. So look, when she has come to rest, again, she will agree that these two people are twins. They're both 10 years old and she's only five years old. She has already become younger. What caused it to happen? Every time she changed frames, their brothers far away jumped time. Now she's going to accelerate one more times towards the left. When she does that, Again, this brother is gonna jump by seven and a half years ahead of this brother. Let's do that, boom. And now again, this bro is saying, hey, that bro is my bro, twin bro. <laughs> but she's saying, uh-uh, that guy is seven and a half years older than you, just like before, there's no difference now. And in the last leg of the journey, again, it will take her five years. And uh, because of time dilation, only two and a half years will go on this clock. But look, how much will it be over here? 17.5 plus two and a half is 20. <laughs> and finally, when she decelerates, again, this person, because the acceleration now towards the right, this person will jump by seven and a half. And that, that guy will also come to 20 years. There you go. And look, there is no paradox. Everyone agrees that it is the traveling twin sister who aged less. What was the key to the resolution? Sure, there were accelerations and all of that, but the key was, as we said in the beginning, relativity of simultaneity. 
when you change frames, which is objective, everyone agrees that it is a traveling twin who changed frames. She was never in one inner shell frame. She changed frames. And when she changed frames, her definition of now, far away, changed. That's why the twin brothers who were far away, they jumped time and they became older during this change of frame. And that was the whole reason why it is the traveling twin it is the stay-at-home brothers that end up staying, becoming older. If it takes you some time to wrap your head around this, it's completely fine. It took me a long time as well, but I hope you have a slightly better intuition about the whole twins paradox. If you do, then I think the video is a success. I'll see you.